Remember that? You remember yeah. They drink a Capri Sun and just become silver people. Yeah, they turn into silver server. Col- yeah, they turn into colloidal silver. They turn into that fucking uh, what is it from a uh, Terminator? Yeah. God. I always think of that uh, Skittles commercial mm-hmm. where it's like the guy's like anything he touches turns to Skittles. I'm like that's such a cool thing. And he goes, Nope. <laughs> uh-huh. Holding your newborn baby <laughs> or the woman you love, and then you're just like, Oh shit, he killed so many people. Yeah, they made that com- those Skittles commercials used to be dark. <laughs> yeah. I remember when, like this guy like had like Skittleitis. <laughs> his skin was like covered in Skittles, and like he had bitches. Yeah. But they only wanted him for his yeah. Skittles that he was producing. They were just like ripping Skittles off his face. He was just like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's a fucking, fucking nightmares beyond our human comprehension. We get dialed in here. We're going whenever you're ready. Oh, we are? Oh, wonderful. We are, We got all that? That's yeah. good. Which, yeah, which, just, which part? We got the Skittles. We got. Oh, hilarious. Yeah. That's good. I think that's about where I started. Oh, wonderful. I don't know Let's if you want to keep it. Yo, 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 what's going on, dude? It's Radio Ridley Radio. I'm your host, Michael Ridley. Uh, today's date is June 13th. It's 6.31 p.m. CST in the great town of Austin, Texas. Today, I'm joined by one of my very good friends from Los Angeles, uh, Frank Steele, everybody. Hey, it feels great to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm sleepy as fuck. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. We were supposed to do this at, like, noon, dude. Yeah, and then we. it was, it was one of those... Perfect situations where you called me and you're like, hey, man, we got to give it a couple of hours. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> Dude, I'm fucked up. You're I, like, yeah. I had a Denny's hangover. Which, Denny's at four in the morning. Like, I saw that coming. It was like 11, 30, 12 uh, at the mothership. And, like, everyone was still kind of hanging out. And I was like, ah, if I get out of here now, I could go to bed. Yeah. And if I hang out here any longer, I'm going to get food at 3 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and be burning out of my asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get food at 3 in the morning and then you have diarrhea for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> What was it? What was our server's name? Kelly. Kelly. I or a Y? Uh, Y. Ooh. Shout out Kelly. She called us sirs. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> she Dude, called us sirs. Anytime, uh, it happens in Austin, but anytime some girl, or also the South, anytime a server calls me honey or darling, I'm like, <laughs> I'll give you all my money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, um, let's, let's start a strip joint where it's all just diner waitresses. <laughs> I mean, have you seen some of these diner waitresses? Yeah, they're either <laughs> they're either I don't understand it. Like when it comes to a diner waitress, it's either like, "Oh yeah, you're like one of the ghouls from Fallout. Yeah, you deserve to be here." Or it's like, "Honey, what's wrong? Let me wh- why Start an OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, why are you here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's either you're a, it's a, yeah, it's it's a <laughs> Two sides of that coin, just fucking absolute fucking wildebeest or goddamn shawty. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what are you, the hottest chick in this town? This yeah. is crazy. Yeah, like Denny's just has like a roster of hot of baddies. But I no, can I can fix her. Yeah, I can fix her for <laughs> the sure. The hottest <laughs> aunt you've ever seen. You're mm-hmm. like, you've got nephews. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. And it's always a... Uh, I, I like I like the I like the black lady. I like the mm-hmm. Okay, baby. Go oh. ahead. Go ahead. All right. I see you. She's gassing you up as you order and shit. Any black lady is that's like a server that I've ever had has always been like especially like old southern. I'm like, oh old my god. Southern you're black the best. Lady serve, uh, old Southern black lady server is God tier, S tier. Mm-hmm. S tier service. S tier. Cause she's a. Uh, it's you know <laughs> I don't wanna say. She's seen everything. Oh my god! <laughs> We've had to say she's been in the service industry for hundreds of years. <laughs> Is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, yeah. Get out of here, boy. You're bothering me, see? Yeah, it's, it's almost like we're finishing each other's sentences. Oh I'm so my glad god. to have you on, dude. <laughs> It's like three minutes in, and it's like, yeah, this, they have, like historically, they're good at serving people. <laughs> it's almost like their DNA has been altered through selective breeding. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh crazy. My God. This is oh, crazy. That that's is, so that's funny. Cr- it, oh, well, I mean, they did say that, uh, they said that DNA was changed. Like, people who experienced slavery, the trauma changed their DNA permanently. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's terrifying to me. And that makes sense as to why I'm not having kids. Like, yeah. I feel like my DNA is definitely altered from what I went through as a kid. 
Oh yeah, there's times where I, I'll I'll think I'm like, do I want a kid? And if I don't have a kid, it's kind of cool because you're like, I'm the I'm the last Castillo, oh. I like the male. Yeah. So like, if I'm like no kids, and it's like my line ends with me. Fuck it. That, no yeah. more. That's where I'm at now. That's exactly my situation as well. But it's funny because it's me, or uh, my severely learning disabled brother. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the last males yeah. on our fucking. My dad's like 75, and everyone in his side of the family has already had kids and changed last names. Learning disabled how? Like, <laughs> my boy. You know, like, you know, <laughs> my brother is, um, they tried to, uh, my mom had a heart attack while she was uh, pregnant with him. And they tried to, they're like, I think like his brain is, is too big for his skull. Did he also have a heart attack? <laughs> I don't know. He definitely lost oxygen. Oh my <laughs> and somebody tried to tell us, like, I think a doctor tried to tell us that his brain is too big for his skull. Like his brain's got a lisp. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, if somebody's tongue's too big for their mouth. <laughs> My brother's brain is too big for his skull, so like that shit, you know, it's, it's under pressure. Dude, his headaches it's under pressure. Must suck. It's under pressure. No, he can't, like he's twenty seven or twenty eight now. He can't. He like reads at like a fifth or sixth grade level. Yeah. He was definitely like, "Hey, George, George Bush, you you left one behind." And he was, <laughs> well, like they didn't. He's autistic. They didn't yeah, understand yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Back then, they they didn't have all this shit because like literally, my wife's brother, my wife's. My wife's oldest second, you know, the, my wife, her brother, mm -hmm. and that, yeah, he is like 24 or 25. He's like a plumber. Oh, okay. He's autistic. He's got, he's making like upwards, he's making six figures, and he's like, fuck. Was his autism thing like hyper focused plumbing? <laughs> Was he like super into Mario <laughs> Brothers, like at young, and you're like, this kid's got a future? Yeah, yeah. But, well, that's what I'm thinking. Like, maybe autistic people, they're just, uh, uh, you know, a neurological <laughs> cast system. And yeah, you they're just like got to figure out what you just got to figure out what they like. Yeah, yeah, and no, they just they're just future in. Amazon employees. They don't even know it. Yeah, yeah, it's just a Montessori school, but just kids <laughs> like doing manual labor and shit. <laughs> it's a Montessori oh school, God. and the kids like he's like wiring a table. <laughs> he's like wire. He has like one of those uh, wiring tables. Is yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's like a developmental toy. Yeah, yeah, my uh, my little sister's uh, premature, so she's got some uh, learning disabilities, but it's mostly because she wasn't able to talk for like a mm. long time. So she's 22 now, but she's like always going to be 15 or 14. That's how my brother yeah. is. My brother is like 20, 27 or 28, but he's like a 17 year old like Mexican teenager. Yeah, and just then attitude, crime, <laughs> <laughs> attitude and crime. Yeah, that's such a Mexican teenager. <laughs> he's like a Mexican teen, Edgar. Uh, my brother's got like permanent Edgar. He has Edgar syndrome. It's fucking. He's got the haircut and everything, <laughs> dude. He he moved to the Philippines. Um, my family's from the Philippines, so like I have a lot of family in the Philippines, and he went to go live with them. And uh, he had no tattoos when he came back. My man had Arabic on his neck. <laughs> man, that's not even from that country. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. He's like Arabic on his neck. And then he's got like a crucial, like high, super high detailed, realistic skull on his hand, and it's and it's like none of his tattoos make sense. It's it looks like he went to a convention and just got several tattoos from various artists at that various he levels. Yeah. Oh my god! But the Arabic on the neck killed me. I was like, brother, you already like are so unemployable. <laughs> you are incredibly unemployable. So like, yeah, that's kind of like. Why I do comedy, bro? When I, I told him I was, I'm gonna get you out of here, dude. I, I just can't do it right now. I just, I <laughs> give can't. me like thirty. Give me like yeah. Give me like another. Give me like thirty. Give me like thirty more years, and I got you, bro. Just stick with it, bro. You just keep you just keep putting the ground beef in those taco <laughs> shells at the Taco Bell, <laughs> and I'm gonna walk through here one day, <laughs> bro. Take that general manager's polo off your back and get you out of here, dude. Dog, we're gonna gordita the fuck out of here. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, dude. <laughs> Guest of the year, Frank Castillo. Uh, this is funny. Uh, my, I have a little brother who's, I'm pretty sure is autistic. Because mm -hmm. uh, whenever I talk to him, he just, he talks, he just says things that no child would say. Like I asked him what he wanted for his, like, he was 10. I asked him what he wanted for his birthday. And he goes, uh, I just want money for a soldering iron. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? I was Hell like, are yeah. you mad at the government? Like, what are you, fucking Timothy McVeigh here? What are you, what the fuck's yeah. going on, dog? Yeah, he's making homemade bombs. That's crazy. He trusts me. He loves electronics. He'll break shit down and put it back together. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's like a it's a caste system yeah. almost. It's like, oh yeah, electrician, or you know, you fucking, oh yeah, you you fix, you fix tech, you fix tech. Fuck, dude, it's you a big f- word. It's totally you, fine. You fix tech. Technology that nobody <laughs> uses anymore. There we go. Yeah. yeah it's like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an AM, FM <laughs> radio repairman. All right. Jesus. <laughs> I'm never, I'm never, I'm never, I'm never podcasting this tired ever again. Oh, no. I can, hung I, over. Yeah, I can see it. It's so funny. We're both just like, uh, uh, hey, what's up, dude? Uh, you ever be in your 30s and not eat particularly well? <laughs> you, ever just, <laughs> you ever wake up and really have to push when you shit? Oh, dude, speaking of which, I've, uh, I'm, I'm, I gotta go to the doctor. I'm scared. I've been telling my wife, I was like, hey, what does it mean that, like, when you go poo-poo and your head starts hurting real bad? Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, dude. I'll go down to shit. I'll sit down to shit, and I'm pressing, and I can feel just pressure building in the top of my crown. And I'm like, yeah, what is what is that? That's no. new. Do you ever have this where it's like you're, you're, you're having sex, and then you come, and then you get a bad headache? Ooh, no. But I do, when I bust, if it's real good, I get like... <laughs> Hey, when I bust and it's real good, if I had if I had a good pipe sesh with the old lady. Wait, do you, is there any? Do you ever bust and it doesn't feel good? <laughs> yeah, it really depends on what I'm beating off to. <laughs> Clown girl porn every time. I feel horrible. I'm like, why did oh, I? You're like, why, why did I? I you're, you're jerking off to a midget. You're like, this feels wrong. I know, dude. I've been looking. It's hard to find midget porn, dude. It's hard. That's like that's like the mythical porn. That's mythic. <laughs> That's a mythic porn pool. I, I used to have a joke about it where it was like, <laughs> when it went to mythic porn pool, I used to have a joke where it was like, when you search for it, you have to use the word midget because if you were if you use the word dwarves, you get like a, a Lord of the Rings porn. <laughs> no, you know no, 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 so, no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yeah. That's so not what we're use, looking for. Yeah, you got to use, yeah. And if you if you type in uh, little people, then you'll go to jail. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty good, dude. Uh, yeah. I'm looking for, that is sus as shit. I'm looking for little people porn. Yeah, they're like, huh? Excuse me? Children? The guy, the guy who's in defeat is like, do you hear yourself right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, ew. Ew, dude. Uh, shoves a toe in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever see those videos of dudes sucking toes? They go, they, they, bro, they fucking. Yeah, they get, it's like, are you sure you're straight, dude? Yeah, dog. No, it's <laughs> like, hey. You're sucking that toe like a dick, bro. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're fucking rubbing the heel like balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God damn it, I'm so glad we got you before you left, brother. Yeah, dog. God. It's like try to do a podcast with somebody and I'm like, come on, man, we're just riffing. Like we're yeah, just yeah. hanging out. It's like, well, what's the what's the point of your show? I'm like, I don't know. Just we we do this for like an hour and then we try to get like three or four minutes to put on Instagram as advertisements to come watch. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's it's easier said than done. Yeah. It's really the art of the riff is real, mm-hmm. real tough. You really get to see, you get to like hang out with people and you get to notice and you're like, oh, you're, you're only like fun on stage. Like you Ooh. don't know how to like Ooh, be brother. like Ooh. fun off stage or like Ooh. really like fuck around and like take Dang. a joke. Like Jeselnik said something to me. I remember he was like, Frank, you're a dirty Mexican. And I was like, whoa. No, uh, he, <laughs> he. <laughs> Yo, shout out Jessel Nick. Dude. No, uh, I remember he <laughs> he was uh, at the store and he was talking and he like I think he, he like cracked a joke about somebody and then like that person uh, like was like hey you know came up to him and he was like nah, I was just fucking around there's no hard feelings at all and it was so funny because he was like he was like we're all comics like if you can't just take an innocent ribbing or just us fucking around like that's the whole point like everyone he was just saying like people just take themselves way too serious people forget. Somebody said something along the lines of, we're the fun makers. Yeah. So, like, hey, if you want to if you wanna bring 9 to 5 energy to a comedy club amongst comics, go be a 9 to 5 piece of shit. Go yeah. be that. Because here, brother, we're all the products of that not working. Yeah. <laughs> all comi- yeah, all comics are, our HR write-ups are like, all right, well, <laughs> oh, I dude. guess I'm going to hit some mics, dude. dude no, yes. Yeah. Every regular person could not handle HR. That's what I'm saying. It's like, like I, anytime I look at like my family or anything, I look at them and I'm like, yeah, none of them could. My cousin got in trouble. He's a felon. Nice. He got out and he got a job. Nice. And he got fired for saying the N word at Hell work. Yeah. Is he black? No, he's a Mexican guy. Oh yeah, but he's this black. is this is what <laughs> culturally. So this is what happened. His his coworker was black. It was a coworker that he knew. They were friends, mm-hmm. and it was like he got fired because it was like a message in work. 
Mm. And what happened was he closed, his friend had closed a really big deal and like made a lot of money. And mm -hmm. he was like, hell yeah, dog, Mott. And then said it, right? Mm. And his friend was like, yeah, like they, his friend didn't even, he was like, fuck yeah, dog, because they're both felons. They're boys. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, <laughs> someone at work saw it and was like, uh uh. And then he got fired for it. And he's like, I can't believe I got fired for that. I can't believe I got fired for con congratulating my black friend the way they like to be congratulated. <laughs> How dare, it's like, hey, lady. HR lady, you don't know nothing about this. Yeah, yeah. All right, you like <laughs> outside of here, we're closer together. Yeah, yeah. And like you're miles away from us, that, like on the outside of this place. That's why I always think there's a that uh, I think it was a TikTok sound or whatever, but it was it was just like uh, it's like when your coworkers start asking you to add them on Instagram, and you're like. Dog, I'm I'm damn near a gang member online. You know, you yeah. know, the work work me is different than than regular me. There's nothing more freeing. I lost my job in April, so like now I'm just I I I'm like, all right, cool. Now it's time to start sharing stuff to Facebook. Because <laughs> I get that friend request from work, dog, and I'm like, <sighs> dude, my wife's family has added me on Facebook, and I, there's a few that I've never clicked accepted, mm -hmm. and then I'll see them, and they'll be like, when did you accept? I'm like, ah, I don't, I'm barely on it. Someone else runs it for me. <laughs> yeah, Facebook is a weird place. Yeah. I don't like Facebook. I don't like it at all. I stopped using it when I started making jokes with friends, and then I would get reported by Facebook HR. Yeah. Like, you type it in, hit enter, and then they're, like, banned for two weeks. And I was like, dude, I'm I'm going to Facebook jail almost every month. And all I'm talking about is Tacomas and ISIS. Yeah, I know. I'm just I'm just talking about, you know, I'm just talking about welding metal plates to a bulldozer and going to Facebook, <laughs> Facebook's headquarters and just, you know, driving through the front door and uh, nobody can stop me. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, um, yeah, now... What I've noticed, what I liked about that with the Facebook jail thing is nobody uses it now. No one does. No one uses Facebook jail. It's like they tried to make Facebook a safer place for people and then inadvertently, like, I don't know if you've ever seen an Instagram comment section, oh but where God. is the disconnect? If those two companies are owned by the same place, dude, <laughs> fucking, yo, Facebook is Weenie Hut Jr. Instagram comments is the salty spittoon. Oh, my God. Dude, there's times where I've seen people <laughs> say shit to me, and I'm like, what? And then you'll respond, and immediately you're, you're reported, but their comment's not. And you're like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like uh, when, you get in, when you get in a fight at school. It's like you defended yourself, so you're punished. Yeah, and you're like, what the what fuck? What the hell? But the perpetrator walks free. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. I don't like that. No. I don't like that. I'm, I'm taking jujitsu classes dude. now, dude. I take one ju takes one jujitsu class. I'm like, dude, I'll fuck anybody up, dude. That's how I'm feeling right I now. I mean, that jujitsu confidence is pretty crazy. <coughs> oh yeah. When I did it, I was the best shape of my life, which isn't anything crazy, but still, mm -hmm. I was like eating everything and being like staying the same. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I wanted to circle back about the when when you bust and it feels good. <laughs> Hey, if I got a good pipe sesh with the old lady and it busts and it feels good, I get like flashbang ears. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I get, dude, I can't. Yeah, yeah, you're dude, like, for like 15 uh, minutes, uh, I'm like, oh, oh my God. My wife's pussy is walking across the, the bedroom holding its arm in hand. It's like, oh. <laughs> it's like a bombing has just went down. It's like D Day Dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> Where are the reinforcements? Here, here, do the bean sound and I'll be me. Bean. Bean. <laughs> Let's take a nap. <laughs> but yeah, I get I get flash bang ears, and it's been like that for you know ever since I've been busting. <laughs> one time, I remember one time I I finished and I finished busting. We finished having sex, and I got off, and I was like, "Woo!" And she was like, "Did you just woo?" And I was like, "Sorry, I don't know what came over me. I got yeah. so excited." You hit her with the Ric Flair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hit her with the dick flare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> woo. That's Woo! real. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, dude. Uh, all those chicks that banged Ric Flair probably. <laughs> all those chicks that Because you were married. Isn't it such a great feeling when you can make your partner fucking come? Like, yeah, you're just yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm still useful. Yeah, and I, and I always hate, like, married comic guys who talk about, like, their marriage being shit or their sex life being shit. I'm like, dude, you married the wrong person. Yeah, yeah. Or you're that's on you. Or that's on you. Yeah, you're a total idiot. Like, that 
I think people who can't make marriage work or people who can't make monogamy work, I think that you're like a level of dumbass where it's like, yeah, you probably don't deserve it. Like if no, you don't, if you can't make it work, you don't deserve it. A hundred percent. I remember yeah. like, uh, it, you know, my parents had me young, they divorced, all this shit. It was real rough. Yeah, mine, up. mine too. Yeah. And then now that I've had this and it's been working for as long as it has, and I look at it, like every time we have an anniversary, I just look at my wife and I get just get mad at my parents. <laughs> of course, because I go, oh, you guys couldn't just be like, hey, I'd appreciate it if you didn't slam doors at through this time and that time. Or, yeah, yeah. hey, could you maybe just rinse the dishes before you put them in the sink? That way, when I clean them, it's a lot easier for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. A simple shit like that. Easy shit. Instead, mm -hmm. they're fucking... My mom... There's a very funny story about my mom and my dad getting in a fight. My mom... Or my dad, to ignore my mom, put on his headphones to his very nice record player that he had bought. And my mom... My mom, being so mad that he had did that, went into the kitchen, got a pitcher of water, and poured it all over it. Yeah, hey, yo. she was that kind of lady. Yeah, and it's like RCA. Yeah, yeah. Like this is back when you would like go to Radio Shack yep. and drop like three grand on a uh, on a hi fi system. There goes Taylor, guys. Shout out to Taylor. He's oh, a fucking. Yeah, he's a technical. He's um. A, oh, perfect. Yeah, and go. then, uh, dude. So th that was one fight they had. Then there was another great fight. Uh, my mom and my dad uh, got into a big argument. My mom had just bought my dad some very nice new pair of Nikes that had just come out. She mm. like waited in line and everything, so they're fighting in the car. So he grabs the shoes, and he tosses them out the window. Wonderful. And my mom stops the car, jumps out, runs and grabs them. And then, like, after he had, like, ran them over a few times. Like, it was a whole... Dude, they... You know just what? You know legendary what? Legendary fights. Yeah, legendary fights and legendary fucking. I'm oh, sorry, it's your parents. Oh my god! <laughs> it's that. It's that Mexican romance and toxicity. <laughs> oh, absolutely. There's no romance in a Mexican household without like an incredible layer of toxicity. <laughs> yeah. Because I ha I grew up with that too. My stepdad and my mom were like that, yeah, yeah. dude. And my parents, my my biological father and my mom, they had like crazy fights too. Like my mom's Filipino. So like there's also so there's like the communication barrier within a marriage and then a language barrier on top of that. So like it'd be something something as simple as my dad would get out of the shower and there would be water in the bathroom floor. Yeah. Okay, that means every mug in the kitchen is now getting smashed on the kitchen floor. It's like that's like what the fuck? Yeah. And they had a story of me like um they lived in DC and they had a condo and it was me, my mom, and my dad. And my mom and my dad were having a crucial Crucial fight. Like, two year old me walks out. I go in the living room. I look at my dad. I look at my mom. You're my mom. I look at my dad. Camera's my dad. Look at Frank, my beautiful mother, Frank. And <laughs> they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting. Two year old me goes, Hey, can't we all just get along? <laughs> two year old me. <laughs> And that's exactly what they did. They stopped fighting, and they immediately started laughing. And that was just a story that I was always told as a kid. And I go, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be the funny guy that fixes it. Oh, my God. I'm the funny guy that fixes shit. This podcast just turned in from riffing into me repeating shit from my wife as a therapist. So that rings very true to me because I remember um, – my dad's an alcoholic, so, like, my wife, she works in rehab and all this stuff and, yeah. like, knows a lot of stuff about A and all these things. And she went to, a, uh, like, a program where they were talking about the, like, seven, not characteristics, but the seven, like, <coughs> mo not modes, uh, the seven, like, uh, mascots mm -hmm. that children of alcoholics end up playing, the mm. roles they end up playing because of having dysfunctional alcoholic parents. And one of them is, one of them is called... Uh, I think it's literally called the comedian, mm. and it's literally someone who uses humor mm -hmm. uh, to to like uh, what's it called uh, dissipate uh, not dissipate but to uh, diffuse diffuse situations mm -hmm. and to like distract everybody mm -hmm. from like the bad that's going on and being like look everything's fine ha ha. Mm -hmm. Then there was another one where it was like the perfect one who like sees everything that's going on, doesn't let them affect them, focuses heavily to leave themselves or remove. Uh, oh okay. Oh, oh, shit. Hold on. I can text my wife and find out real quick. But yeah, I understand. Yeah, you yeah. fall into like this archetype. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's like, like seven archetypes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and one of them is like you just turn into an alcoholic, exactly, just repeating everything you've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I was the alcoholic comedian, if that was yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, for a while, dude. I did. Oh, my, my brother. I used to fucking tear it up, dude. Oh, no. Uh, at the store, I used to drink. It was the, heavily, the heaviest I ever drank. And it was because I was like 23 at this club. I, don't know, I might have been 25 at this club. There was three different bars you could go to, like three different, like there was a service bar, the front bar, and the back bar. 
And if there's five bartenders, so if you knew each bartender, they would all give you a shot. So mm. by the end of the shift, if you went around three times, you've taken like 10 or 15 shots. Oh, yeah. And then like an eight-hour shift. So oh, like, yeah. You're working four days a week, you know? Mm -hmm. By the time I'd get home, I'd be, I'd be shit-faced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I think, boy, one week in particular, my wife came up to me and she was like, hey, man, we got to talk. She was like, mm -hmm. you've shown up home drunk every single day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, uh, I've had that one. Uh, shit. I've had that convo yeah. with the, the old lady. Hey, shout out to my wife. With hey, her. man, shout out to wives, dog. Yeah, wives are good. Dude, wives be putting up with shit, yeah? Hey, you know what I'm saying? You, I've, I've given her many an opportunity. You know, I wouldn't have put up with a quarter of the shit that I put my <laughs> wife through, dude. I swear to God. Like, if my wife if my wife would drink a handle of Fireball and run around the neighborhood butt-ass naked, I would have left her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she didn't leave yeah. me when I did that. Yeah, yeah. If my wife was like, hey, sleep on this couch for a month until we get our own apartment, and then I'm going to work at a comedy club. Or she was going to work at a comedy club. I'd have been like, Ugh, I don't uh, know, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For uh, here, um, I'm gonna move to a major city for three months, and you can stay with your parents until the coast is clear. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exactly what I did, yeah, yeah. and I'm not gonna cheat on you. I promise. I'm getting no. I did. I got sober, and I was like, dude, I can't be drunk and alone in this no. big old city. No. And I'm on stage. Well, dude, I'm only hot when I get off stage, and then the the ring, yep. the ring makes you hotter. Yeah, that's the one thing I've noticed is uh, it's like I don't get hit on often, but when I do, it's chicks that are like, I'm trying to fuck a married guy, and I'm like, that's yeah. scary, and it's I don't disgusting. need disgusting. Yeah, it's it's brutal. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, but I also don't need that. Oh, thank you so <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. I feel great about that, but <laughs> yeah. I would feel worse if I actually followed. Through of course, it's it like it's very flattering, but mm -hmm. I'm alright. I remember I went out with Polly. We were in, um, my God, I think it was Buffalo, New York. I got us. <laughs> we're in Buffalo. <laughs> I got, I got us. Come on, Frankie. We're going to Buffalo, New York. <laughs> what? 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 Buffalo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God! It. It's like it's like he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Pari. Hi, hello. I'm Pari Shore. <laughs> Asian, <laughs> Asian Polly Shore would be fucking like Asian like, Shore, uh, dog. You, you're watching, oh, uh, it's me, the Weezer. <laughs> <laughs> you're watching a Emma TV. <laughs> Asian <laughs> Polly Shore is crazy. <laughs> oh, it's the Reening Tower. And Cheese that is. <laughs> <laughs> Biodomo. Uh, sorry, we're, right, go, I'm sorry. we're going to Buffalo. <laughs> all right, so, so you guys are in Buffalo. We're in Buffalo at the Funny Bone, and uh, I get off stage, and this girl comes up to me, and she goes, um, "You were so funny," and I was like, "Thank you." And she's like, "Do you really have uh, a fiance?" This is when I was engaged at the time. She's like, "Do you really have a fiance?" And I go, "Yeah." Why would I make that up? She's like, "So she's real?" And I go, "Yeah." And she goes, "Ah." She was like, a girlfriend I can cheat. She's like, a girlfriend I can cheat on, but I can't do that to a fiance. And I was like, "What the fuck?" Assuming that I'd be down. Yeah, like yeah. she assumption. has the power. I yeah, was like, holy yeah. shit. Right? And she's was just like talking about like, she was like trying to fuck. And then I was like, all right, that's cool. Have a good one. Uh, uh. And then like I leave, or she leaves and the security guard comes up to me and he goes, yeah, man, she was trying to fuck everybody tonight. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. She gave me the full scoop. Her boyfriend's in jail. And I was like, oh, shit. And uh, yeah, she's got the place to herself for a while. And I was like, oh, my God. And he was like, yeah, apparently she got to have a really bad relationship. And I was like, that sounds terrible. So we're doing merch later, right? We're doing merch. The girl comes up to me afterwards. She goes, hey, I know you're busy. She was like, but if you want to give me a call later, I'm in town. And I was like, ooh. Right? So she slides me a number. And I'm just like, okay. And I look at it, and I just kind of like, mm -hmm. right? And I'm watching her walk away, and she walks back to a guy that she's on a date with at the comedy show. Mm. I was like, Jesus mm. fucking Christ. Shout out Funny Bone Buffalo, New York. And, uh, <laughs> shout out funny, yeah, funny Bone getting people laid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude. Oh, she was going to get a funny bone. All right, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's going to get a funny boner. <laughs> Inner giner. Yeah, but it was just kind of like, ugh. Yeah, dude, chuckle fuckers. Dude, shout out chuckle fuckers. But dude. it's crazy how they think that they, like, the second you get off stage, they think that's the most, like, attractive you are. Ugh. But I get it because it's like this facade. We're not, of, even, like, we're not even traditionally attractive guys. No, but they I'm just like, see how confident you are. It's the power. And you it's can the, control a room. Everyone's yeah. paying attention to you. Coochie's wet. <laughs> Yeah, I seen I seen a Matt Rife show in real life, dude. All the stools had moisture upon them. <laughs> I, wa I was a door guy. I was a door guy for Matt Rife. Uh, I was a door guy for Vulcan during a Matt Rife special taping. And uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, all the seats smelled like fish. It was fucking horrible. <laughs> there was a condensation. <laughs> how many How many older women? Dude, were there? there were ganging milfs at the yeah, Matt dude, Rife show. Of course. Dude. 
there were hella milfs at the yo shout out man uh <laughs> He's been nothing but a he's been nothing but a chill guy to me. But good God, dude, it was gross. I kicked a girl out. I kicked a girl out during a Matt Rife uh, special uh, taping. And you know that back alley at Vulcan? Yeah. You know where that there's a there's a towel dispensary thing there. You put your you put your spent towels. It was raining hard as fuck, and we get this fat girl. Uh, we kick this fat girl out the back doors of Vulcan, and she just lays. She goes. She's screaming. She's wooing way too loud after every punch. And we're, they're recording a special. So I go, ma'am, um, you're very drunk. You're overserved. It's it's time to go. If you like, you know what I mean? She's like, she looks at me and she goes, before I finish the sentence, before I kick her out, she goes, I have to leave, right? She knows. Bitch knows. Oh, I hate that face. I hate I that face. I have to leave, right? Okay. And she she has her shit together. She has her shit together. We walk her out. Well, she fucking like... She she gets up out of her chair as if a wizard had casted a spell on a series of stones, and those stones became a golem. <laughs> That's how she's walking. She's like, <laughs> she's fucked up, dude. She's just fucking waddling. We get her out the back door. Um, it starts raining. She gets down on her knees and starts... <laughs> There's double layered doors and they're recording and Matt's up there. <laughs> Matt's up there. Matt's up there doing his shit. Matt's up there, you know, handsome squid wording. Rifing it up. And you can just hear. <laughs> <laughs> I go back out, dude. She's face down in a puddle of towels. Like you spent bar towels crying in the rain. And I go, <laughs> what in the fuck is this, dude? Dude, so, yeah, TikTok's the- powerful, baby. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the Matt Rife crowds are, it's pretty weird. It's just like a bunch of fat simp girls are fucking just fucking old You cougars. mean to tell me they're not educated comedy fans? <laughs> there were some hot bitches there. He gets the people, he gets the bitches there for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were hella bit. I've never seen that many women at a comedy show before. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Then I saw him another time, and he, like, I, he was working on a new hour or whatever, and it was really raunchy. He had like a shower cum bit, and it's now you could see him. He's like, all right, so I'm going to get the bitches but I'm really just here for the boys. I'm trying to convert all the women. You can tell in the new hour, he's like, all right, girl fans are cringe. <laughs> you can see it in the performance. He's like, all right, I don't want any more girlfriends. Yeah. I want the bros now. Yeah, because not, there's, there's nothing like jokes to the bros like, don't you love it when you come in the shower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's going to have a bunch of bears show up at a show. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just a bunch of gay It's dudes. a bunch of just 45-year-old yeah. gay men. Kevin Spacey's hanging out being like, I need my house back. Come on, man. <laughs> Let me give you some K-Packs. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your ass over here. <laughs> mm. But yeah, comedy's weird, man. Oh, yeah. The attraction, the attraction thing is weird. Yeah, no, I uh, I also, I've, I've never been very lucky to never have to date a comic, so that's been pretty oh, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't recommend it. Oh, no, it always just reminds me of high school. It reminds yeah, me of high school drama. Nope, it's not good. I've seen too many friends of mine date a comic, then they break up, and then that comic... That mm-hmm. they were dating now hangs out still because it was like, well, you dated this comic, so now all the cool stuff of being that person's girlfriend is like it doesn't transfer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you I, don't. Yeah, yeah. All, I made the uh, I made all those beginners mistakes in Virginia. Yeah, I'm grateful I did all that shit. I was homeless. I was a homeless guy bombing at mics. The guy fucking not knowing how to do shit. The guy you know uh, alienating himself and cussing people out. Drunk. Like I was not good. I was no bueno. I was a bad boy. I was a bit yeah. of a. I was a bit of a comedy bad boy. Oh uh, shit! Here, comedy yeah. bad boy. I was baby. the bully. I was the bully, dude. I fucking. I would go up. I was, you know, like seven years in, eight years in, still at like open mic level, not getting shit because we had like one funny bone that's managed extremely poorly, and then we have like an old eight club that's like stuck in the eighties, and I'm at that one. And this is how I got banned from my local funny bone before I moved to Austin. There's a guy who used to sell like comedy classes out of the funny bone. And they would come to our open mic at the crappy old 80s club. And then I'd be like, uh, oh, I see a lot of students uh, from the Funny Bones uh, comedy class are here. It's not even the Funny Bones. He's just the guy. He's friends yeah. with the manager. Yep. So he has nothing to do with the Funny Bone. It's not. It's like the Funny Bone doesn't have comedy classes. No. It's just some guy that, you know, the seven-year comic guy that has the same 10-minute set that he opens with and he opens the shows for the Funny Bone. It's that guy. And he's like... He's running the class like four hundred. I think it's like three fifty. Jesus, three fifty or like four hundred fifty dollars. And all the class, all the students are in there, and I'm crushing. 
and I go, oh my God, I see some of the students are here. You guys, um, do you guys know that I also take a comedy class every week for free? It's called This Place for free. You didn't have to spend that money. <laughs> and I, go, you, I was like, you guys got got because you're like going to do this one mic, right? I see it all the time. You guys are going to do this one mic and we'll never see you again. But you know what else? He got your money. Yeah. <laughs> Let's lay it out for him that they got scammed and then like that reported back to him and then I was banned. He, so he got you banned from that funny bone? Yeah. And then I'm, what a fucking yeah. piece of shit. But here's the thing. The funny thing is, is like uh, I move here and I become friends with uh, Matt's opener. And then uh, I had to come back to Virginia for like some work related shit. And his opener is like, hey, we're doing a show at the funny bone. Why don't you come hang out? And then it's me and Matt Reif walking through the front door of that funny bone. And the manager's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> It's very great. funny. Very You're funny. like, hey, man, good to yeah, see you. How you guys? doing? <laughs> yeah. You gonna make sure I got my name right on that check? Yeah, at the peak of the fucking Matt Rife shit. Yeah, like, yeah. like when he, you know, the peak, he's still peaking, but like at the very beginning of the there peak. Yeah. It was funny. It was just good timing. It was like, I'm not even like friends with him like that. I'm just cool with his opener. I haven't seen him in a while. But yeah, it's just perception is everything, I guess. Oh, it's so, it is. It's the worst. Because I used to just be the drunk asshole at Mike's. And now I, I'm grateful I got sober. Yeah, how long have you been sober for now? Um, dude, uh, October will be two years. So oh, yeah, fuck like a yeah, year and a half sober, congratulations. Yeah. We're getting there. What is it, June? Yeah. So fucking four more months, dude, and two years sober. I think I'm going to have a big old, old-fashioned. Yeah, let's fucking throw it back. Throw it all away. Well, um, I kind of want to, like, I like that uh, the, the riffing comes out better when you're drunk. Honestly. I mean. If you're a little buzzed. You, you, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, you're you're not trying I can't, to like persuade yeah, I, me. Yeah, I can't say that to you of all people. I can't be like, yeah, get drunk. Your riffing will be better. No, yeah. I think your riffing is great. <laughs> okay, thank you. Imagine you're welcome. If you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you should totally start drinking again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah why can't I be surrounded by people who tell me the truth? <laughs> I'm just around all these liars to say I can't start drinking again. You guys yeah. are fucking bad people. That was a test and you passed, Frank. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know what's crazy? Huh. Look at look at the logo of my podcast. Oh shit! Now look back at me. <laughs> oh my god, it's so uncanny. It does. It, you do look like a King of the Hill character. <laughs> I look like I look like one of Connie's cousins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look like one of Connie's cousins that bully Bobby. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna be in the new reboot. Yeah, yeah. I want. Yeah, I want to be the son. Uh, yeah, we gotta get I wanna... you drawn in the King of the Hill. Little Connie, dog. Yeah, Lil Con. Lil Con. <laughs> Lil Con. Lil Con. Lil Con, Lil Conrad. Lil Con X. <laughs> Lil Con X box. Lil Clean X. Young, uh, young Clean X. Young Clean X. Gotta keep <laughs> that nose clean. Yeah, keep that nose wiped. You heard? Shit, dog. Stay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. My whole body is sore. Oh, my God. What are you going to do after this? I don't know. I think I'm going to do glutes today, dude. I think <laughs> you know, you should take a day off and just I'm gonna, rest. No, I'm going to put a 15-pound barbell in between my ass cheeks. Hit it with the Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> one and two and one and two and one and two. Go on YouTube, type in Rocco's Modern Life ass oh, cheek workout. Man. God damn it, dude. Do you ever, uh, you ever hear of uh, Carl Weezer? Do you know who that is? Hmm? Carl Weezer. Carl Weezer. Yeah, from uh, Jimmy Neutron. Frank, let me tell you something. <laughs> I, uh, I'm so good at doing Carl Weezer. You don't even know. Uh, have you seen Carl Weezer sing songs? Yeah, what, like, um, he, he, I've seen it on TikTok. So Carl Weezer uh, does a cover of Joji, which is like sad boy music. Dude, it's so funny. <laughs> Go to the gift for anything. <laughs> That's going to be me. That's going to be me later, dude. I'm going to be in there with the one and two and one and oh two. Oh, my God. Hey, it'll work out my glutes. I have dude, no idea what I'm doing. those cartoons were so ridiculous Unhinged. for kids. Unhinged, dude. What were they? Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Fathead? <laughs> Mr. and oh, Mrs. Yeah. Fathead? They were just like a swingers couple. Yeah, the that was the... He was like, yeah. a, he was like a cuck. Yeah. Mr. Fathead was a cuck. Yeah, and they were go over. frogs, right? Yeah, they were frogs. His old, lady would, his old lady was just a slut, dude. Mrs. Fathead. But yeah, you talking about what are you saying about Carl singing songs? Oh yeah, Carl. Uh, if you go to Carl Weezer, I don't know if you oh, can yeah. play it because it's whatever. But uh, Carl Weezer <laughs> uh, sings. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm a creep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? Yeah, that's pretty much it, dog. It's I so don't belong <laughs> here. <laughs> 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 Jimmy, Judy, I think.
think of you day and night. I swear to God, Jimmy, I just want to fuck your mom so bad. <laughs> oh, no, this is the one. Is it? Is, is, there, a song? is there a specific song? No, that's, I that's fine. It was just Carl Weezer. Carl Weezer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take on me, croissant remix. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's mom, her ass is so good. I'm like trying to sing as Carl. That's hard. Uh, I have a, uh, I have heard uh, what Redbound would, Redbone would sound like if it was sung by Carl Weezer. Oh I've seen God. that one. Yeah. Will you ever throw that voice in when you're a <laughs> <laughs> pipe in the old wife? Yeah. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh dude, now, nah, now, nah, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you a, just a POV of me. Just, <laughs> I'm just gonna send you a selfie video of me. It's gonna be a video of me from the chest up, and you're just gonna hear. You're just gonna hear. Yeah, you like that? Jump <laughs> oh, into Jehoshaphat. Oh my god! <laughs> I mu I must, and it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know who's a good one? My ears are ringing. <laughs> oh god! You know I busted so good, and my fucking ears are ringing. <laughs> Frank, my, my ears are ringing. I can't hear. Oh really. my god! I can hear shit for at least like fifteen minutes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh my uh, god! I dude. wish I could do impressions. I was just my, never good at it. My them. wife's pussy will seal. <laughs> <laughs> Shut. It'll seal shut, and I'll never be allowed in the interior of that building ever again, dude. I'll never be allowed in that hotel lobby, it's, dude. It's like a, it's like a, uh, was it um poltergeist when the light shines through the door or whatever? It's just, just the fucking. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, dude. But uh, yeah. I don't know why I could do that when I'm crying. God, I'm crying. That's so good. good. How, when did you? How did you know you can do all these impressions? Like third grade, mm. third grade. It was like it was one of those coping mechanisms, you know, like when you sit in front of the television as a kid and you're just watching cartoons, and then it's like, oh, so you're telling me somebody gets paid to do that? Yeah, like, you know what I mean. So it was cartoons, Whose Line, and then Comedy Central presents. Oh, Whose Line was? Ugh, that was the best. Every day after school, and then once I finished all my comedy. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. yeah. The Dragon Ball Z fucking voice announcer guy. You know why um, Mexicans love Dragon Ball Z so much? <laughs> There's a legit reason. Uh, what is it? Yeah. So in Mexico, is they- like folklore that like permeates over? Or? No, no, no. So in Mexico, uh, when they had, basically at the, when they had TV, they didn't have the infrastructure for network TV or basically mm. like any local whatever. So they would have to pay for licenses mm -hmm. to- basically play TV for anybody that was watching in Mexico. So they paid a bunch of money to license Dragon Ball Z episodes. So that they literally, all they would play on TV was just Dragon Ball Z. So it's cultural. It literally, so many generations of Mexicans grew up watching Dragon Ball Z in Mexico. <laughs> That's why like on TikTok, you'll see like old Mexican men who were just like, fucking Goku, you know what I mean? See, yeah, they, they just love it. And it Yoku. like, I didn't understand until I Googled it, and it was literally like, they were like, yeah, that's why they like it so much, just because mm -hmm. it was all they were able to watch for mm -hmm. a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's fucking a great wild. way to get a fan base. It's just incredible. For, just for forcibly, dude, just that we are the only thing that you, they can watch. It was, dude, it's so ingrained in their culture that they'll do watch parties for all the new movies that come out and they would do it in like huge arenas and stuff which is illegal <laughs> like <laughs> they got cease and desist but mexico was just like we don't give a shit mm -hmm. and they literally would still have huge parties yeah of course and then like you uh, might be able to find it just see a uh, mexican uh mexico viewing party of dragon ball z yeah i'm just picturing an elote cart with an airbrushed <laughs> super saiyan 2 goku on the side of it like ding 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 Elote man's got DBZ spray painted oh on this ice cream, Mexican ice cream guy. Yeah, look, 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 look. <laughs> Dude, look at that. <laughs> they're watching. <laughs> Dude, they're watching this shit like it's the fucking <coughs> soccer match. Dude, it's so fucking funny. That's incredible. That's incredible, dude. Dude, look at that. He's fighting Jiren. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they're all sitting down. Look, they're all standing. By the, that is 
in a plaza. That's amazing. Yes! That one's always the best. <laughs> They're all getting into it. Yes, dude, the double fists in the air. <laughs> look at the, look at the that old kid? guy. Yeah. <laughs> dude, crying. <laughs> yeah, they're shaking each other, dude. Look at that. Man, I gotta watch those new movies. Yeah. I gotta get caught up on my DVD oh, sizzle. Dude, it is is wild. And then you've yeah. heard of uh, the cholos in Japan, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Japanese cholos rule because mm -hmm. they build like sixty four impalas and they yep. all get the tattoos. And dude, there's something. A uh, new fetish of mine that I unlocked for some reason through that is Japanese cholas. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Type in Japanese cholas. They're fucking, they oh look just like real God. Mexican cholos. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They look like the fucking Mexican. Oh, my God. Mira los Japones. And all these chicks yeah. are all like, they all have like legit jobs. Yeah, they're like, that's an accountant in uh, Shibuya. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's the lead marketing director for Sony. <laughs> <laughs> Meet the Chicanos of Japan, las, la prensa. <laughs> that's, so fucking... that's a little kimchi right there. <laughs> <laughs> little, 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 little kimchi is wild, dude. She's like, uh, she's like, what are you not doing this? Fool. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me that there are Japanese Mexican cholas? <laughs> are you telling me that's the best of both worlds? <laughs> the 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 aesthetic of a the aesthetic of a of a Mexican woman in the LA and the, the sweet temperament of a Japanese woman? <laughs> <laughs> Impossible! Impossible, Kakarot. <laughs> yeah, it's what? all all the best parts of Mexican women and all the all the best parts of Japanese women. Well, yeah, none of the flack. <laughs> yeah, none of the none of the extra bullshit. Just yeah, uh, I'll tell you the polar opposite of that com combination: Arab tow truck driver. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm Let having. Me, a, I'm I have having to a see situation. Arab Arab tow truck driver. <laughs> we need an we dude. We need to pay for AI generators so we oh, can just oh, generate. Oh, I thought that. <laughs> Let's see if this comes up. <laughs> ding, 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 a regular ding, ding. Arab guy. Bro, uh, truck. Yeah, <laughs> it's like your tow truck driver. Your tow truck driver has slip on loafers. <laughs> oh, it's he's so like, funny. you're not getting this back, brother. This is ours now. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh my goodness, a 1999 Toyota Tacoma. It'd be a shame if somebody strapped a machine gun into the truck bed. <laughs> Habibi, help me load this. <laughs> Kakarot, I parked the truck right here. <laughs> it was right here, I promise. <laughs> no, I thought you had the keys. <laughs> well, what are we going to tell Piccolo then? I'll call him now. Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, Piccolo, but... Yeah, the truck is gone. <laughs> yeah, Arab tow truck drivers again. <laughs> again. What are we doing in, what are we doing in Dubai, Kakarot? But yeah, I can do Vegeta too. I know. Oh uh, yeah. So what are we? Uh, what are we doing here? Are we? Uh, well, uh, God, <laughs> Carl versus Vegeta. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Of, uh, if we'd had a script, have you seen those podcasts where it's just like two voice actors and they're yeah, like, yeah. "All right, let's do Star Wars," but like it's fucking. They're doing the that final scene like. You're my brother, Anakin. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> I loved you. <laughs> it's the guy who does. You were, you were supposed to be the one that changes yeah. the force. Yeah, you're the chosen one. You were supposed to bring balance to the force, not destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> now you don't have any legs. <laughs> yeah, that was funny as hell. That scene always made me laugh. In the here's the thing. I'm grateful for the sequels because they made everyone appreciate the prequels. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not like, I, I tried. One night I was up until like four in the morning being like uh, Star Wars sequels, and then it would just Google auto finished wasted potential. Or like, I don't know, there's just so many but opportunities. Also, like, what was it? Uh, not George Lucas. It was, well, yeah, Luke, Lucas was the one who. George Lucas, he gave them. He gave them scripts. He was like, here, you can you can try this. Yeah, but or Spielberg was the who directed Lu Lucas. Yeah, it's George Lucas. I always mm -hmm. get him and Spielberg mixed up. The thing that was funny thing about Lucas is like, especially those prequels, it's like that's when he was going to through the divorce, right? 
Mm. Right? And then, like, it's just so wild to look at the prequels. And they're obviously for his kids and stuff, but there's some shit you watch and you're like, dog, what's going on? Like, the oh, fucking, the two we, squid Japanese people in the beginning of the oh, first one. I'm like, what the to, fuck is this? Yeah, and I love how the, the, the pod racer guy is just a Jew. That's I thought he was Italian. No, no, no. He's a Jew. He's like, your mind tricks enough to work on me, Jedi. It's like, it's <laughs> a, he's like a, he's like, look. Yeah, yeah I, thought Watto, was a, I thought he was Italian. <laughs> Watto, Watto was a, they, they, they weren't trying to hide it with the nose, too. It's yeah. like, your, your tricks don't work on me. He's but like did, trying to get it for cheaper or whatever. He's like trying to barter with him. Dude, did you ever see the, uh, the show, the, uh, the two, like, a Viceroy? Viceroy. The, the Viceroy's in the trade routes. Yeah, they're like fish guys. They're fish guys, but do they talk yeah, like they, this? They, dude, so hardcore Japanese. How do you spell it? Uh, type in, type in uh, Viceroy Star Wars trade route. Or Viceroy Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Star Wars Viceroy. Yeah, yeah those that guys, guy. That yeah. guy. Play a video of him talking. It is <laughs> crazy racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking racist. <laughs> Probably gonna get pulled. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Just click to like the middle of it, so we don't have to do any of the build up. Yeah, there we go. This invasion will gain you nothing. We're a democracy. The people have decided. Tuck him away. <laughs> oh, did they change his voice? No, there's two of them. Position to begin searching the swamps for these there's two of them. Underwater villages. They will not stay hidden for long. So oh, one of weird. them. Yeah, one of them is. There's two guys. There's two guys. One of them sounded like relatively like kind of Japanese. The other one sounded like fucking <laughs> like your grandfather from fucking World War whatever fucking drew a Japanese guy. It was crazy. Yeah. They did the Japanese voice. And then um, I'm trying to think of other. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. This is good. This is it. What? What did you say? <laughs> the ambassadors are Jedi Knights, I believe. What did you say? The ambassadors are Jedi Knights. What? The ambassadors. What did you say? <laughs> the ambassadors are Jedi Knights, I believe. They're here to force a settlement. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> are you an angel? What? <laughs> are you the deep space pirates talk about? They're the most beautiful <laughs> creatures in the universe. What did you say? <laughs> I love these. I love these Star Wars edits. They're so funny. The council does not. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? What did you say? <laughs> My stomach hurts. <laughs> what the, did you say? It's crazy, dude. That is wild that they got away with that. Oh, I liked. <laughs> I really. I really liked. Um, I really liked them. I liked the prequels. <clears throat> people we've like as we became adults everyone's like nah these are okay yeah. because the, the the fans at the time the adult fans at the time were like this is horse shit and I was like I don't know toys were great I had a good time <laughs> dude I was a kid when those came out I remember like I remember uh, camping out with my dad in line the night before yeah he took me out of school to go see it yeah I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. When oh, your dad yeah. takes you out of school to go oh, yeah. see the movie. We grew up um, right next to a movie theater as a kid. Like, literally, I could walk out my front door and walk 30, uh, 30 feet to the front door of a Regal Cinema. And it was, um, it was like they didn't put a fence up yet. It was such a new development. It was one of those where it was like, um, it was just like, oh, we're going to make suburbs, but we're going to put a bunch of shops and shit like that in one of the th shopping centers we lived right next to. And I saw fucking episode one there. And I saw episode three there. I saw the entire, I saw the entire prequel trilogy at that movie theater. Yeah. And as they were coming out, we would just walk and get it. And all the fucking, the, the fucking commemorative fucking uh, uh, popcorn shit, all the promotional shit they had back then ruled. Oh yeah. I had the lightsaber that turned blue and red. It was the Anakin lightsaber when he converts. So yeah. it was just a clear lightsaber. We switch one and it's red. And then you switch one, it's blue. We were in the backseat of my mom's car, just switching it from red to blue. And my mom was like, hey, stop that. We're a cop now. <laughs> like, I'm just yeah. back there, like, creating a fucking... <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah, we're just an undercover cop now. It's just me and my brother back there flipping our lightsabers <laughs> back and forth. Yeah. Uh, that's so fucking cool. I miss that, dude. I miss that. Yeah, being a kid and that the childlike fucking wonder you'd have, yeah, the easiest yeah. shit. For me, it was the Lego sets. I had the... Oh, I, yeah. I, we went to TJ Maxx one time, and I got the Gungan Submarine. Taylor, type in Gungan Submarine um, Lego set. 
This shit was badass. Yeah. It came with, um, you got a Jar Jar Binks minifigure, you got a Qui-Gon, and you got a fucking uh, Obi-Wan. And you could split them into three little separate submarines. Or you I remember that them. one. Dude, yeah, you yeah, You combine yeah. it into one big submarine. Gungan submarine Lego set. Go down, scroll down. Right there on eBay. Or Replica Republic Bricks. Yeah, that was the case. that was the set right there. That shit was gangster. Not that one. That's a remake. Republicbricks.com. The one you were looking at says 81% off. Nope, directly to the right. Yep, that one. Click that, and then... Yeah, dude. Dude, I remember that. Oh, no, that's a different one. That's like a... That's like a set that... Yeah, dude, I don't know. I think the... Yeah, that's the set. System. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I remember I went to... Uh, when I went to Japan... Yeah? They have such a crazy, like... Japan rules. Dude, they have such a crazy, like, collector scene out there. Like, people collected stuff from, like, the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s, mm -hmm. and they all have, like, tons of them there, and it's all just in great condition. I literally bought all the toys that I played with as a kid. Mm. I found three of the action figures uh, wow. that I played with, and I spent, like, $160 on I, three. I, dude, I like, that yeah. sucks, because my I'm, I'm, I grew up as a Filipino kid, and my, you know, culturally Filipino, you're done with your toys? They're going to the motherland. Yeah. Wait, I, what? Yeah, my N64 is in the Philippines. I had a Hey You Pikachu N64 with a Pokemon Stadium, gold and silver. Dude, we had all that dope-ass shit. And, oh, you're done playing with it? <whistles> Send it to the Philippines. To who? My cousins. Those motherfuckers. I know, and now all that stuff's worth hella money, and I'm like, man, I wish what I had What are they that. doing? Are they, do they sell it and buy a fucking mansion? Who knows? Uh, can you go... <laughs> Pretty much, pretty I mean, much. I'm, dude. If, that if, stuff's if, worth a fortune. Yeah, there. If one, I'm, if I, I'm pretty sure the Philippines trade, uh, like, yeah, the it's exchange insane. rate is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure one Pikachu is worth yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. three mansions. Can we look at the back of the box? Because there's a second picture. There's a second picture I think that shows the back of the box. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. See how it separates, and you could make it's a it's a Lego system set, so you could break it down and make three other fucking things out of it. At a fucking Ross. At a fucking Ross. Shout out Darian Irwin calling me during the podcast. Here, hold on. Let's answer it. Hey, Darian, what's up? You're on Radio Ridley Radio. Michael Ridley. Hey, what's up, buddy? It's your father. <laughs> <laughs> we are Why just. Are it's so we funny. We're for you. I thought it was. Uh, many said, customer, many customer. No one serving nothing. Where's your meat? <laughs> I thought it was the guy from the Star Wars movie. Yeah, we were literally just watching a clip from Star Wars where they're talk with the, the guys that talk Japanese, the trade route guys. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you call and you're like, "Hello, what are you doing?" Michael, Michael, I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want, Dad? What do you need? Uh, I actually have something to talk to you that I can't say uh, that's being recorded. So it's a lot of slurs and stuff. So just call me back when you're done. All right. All right. I'll call you in a second. Bye-bye. Right, Bye. How perfect was that? Because then we could bridge those. We could bridge that part and then be like, hold on. Darian Irwin's calling. Michael! <laughs> <laughs> I'll tag you and Darian. <laughs> So clippable. So many clips. I had so much fun with you, dude. Dude, well, my let pleasure. me check my shirt right now. Yeah, we're done. All right. We I'm glad. Three, did you, was it minutes. good? Three, was it fun? We got three minutes. We can keep. Yeah, three, three minutes. We can wrap up. We can do a wrap. First. Is there anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I got a show at the Ice House, Pasadena. I don't know when this comes out. Comes out uh, uh, probably Friday. All right, cool. My show's June 21st, and then uh, June or July 28th. Wonderful. I have a show at the Sunset Strip in here in Austin, Texas. Ooh. And then. Um, you will see about if I'm going to move here or not. Please. You got to do it. You got to do yeah, it. Yeah, a lot of people have been bugging me. You got Ed Greer's coming. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I got enough. Uh, there's a lot of weed people in California, like legal brands, that have been bugging me to do something. So I think this might be the perfect opportunity. I think you could you could totally capitalize on that. Yeah, yeah. You can produce a show. Yeah. We can do a weed show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, uh, well, Sunset's already like, we'll give you monthly. So There you go. Yeah. So I think it's all lining up. And then I'm going to be on it. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually, are you free July 28th? Do you want to do my show? Y'all. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That's how Wonderful. we work. Uh, see? That's see? how it works. That's, yeah. Austin, baby. July 28th. You'll be in Portland with me, I think. July 28th? But, yeah. 
You said July yeah, 28th? Yeah. yeah, I'm in Portland. Sorry. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, tour, I guess dude. that's not how it works here. I'm on Austin. tour, dude. <laughs> I'm in. Guys, uh, go, go see rain us check, in Portland. Rain check. Rain, rain check. Rain do you, check do you want to do my show? No, I'm just going <laughs> to. I'll be. Yeah, he's, I know you're going to be. Right right yeah. <laughs> you want to come to the pants party? Yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's Guys, go. Uh, yo, show Frank the flyer for the show real quick. Guys, we're going to be in Portland, Oregon uh, in July, end of July. So uh, anybody listening that uh, is from Portland, uh, which I have a couple of I have a couple of homies out there. If you guys want to come see us, I'll be opening for Taylor and his band, comedians and metal bands. You ain't even know about. Oh that. shit! Yeah, we talked about that. You know Joe Bagley, right? Joe Badley. Joe Begley. Joe Bad. Joe Bad. Yeah. Yeah, from Fit for an Autopsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like know him like that. I met him a couple times. Wait, who was it? Someone was telling me that they were friends with him. With Joe Bad from Fit yeah. for an Autopsy. Not yeah. me. Someone was yeah. Someone oh, someone here was just like I know him, and I was like, oh shit, that's crazy. You guys all know each other. Yeah, look at this flyer. Oh, that's so sick. Look at my look. That's me. <laughs> Chinky sweat like a metal band, and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, it's a guy. <laughs> it's a guy. Like in parentheses. <laughs> It's just a guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No. This isn't like a racist metal band. It's a guy. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Yeah. Hey, what's up? We are Chinky Sweat. It's just a bunch of white gonna... dudes. <laughs> it's a bunch of white dudes doing the voice. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, a full metal Asian band called Chinky Sweat is pretty sick. Actually, pretty badass. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Dun, dun, dun. Open up the pit. <laughs> <laughs> I want everybody in this bitch a moving. At it. <laughs> Everyone bows before they start fucking beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> Dude's just in the pit, like. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Dude's just in the pit, like fucking. Ugh, ugh. Just, he's not head banging. He's bowing aggressively. He's just, he's just like Asian people and Asian people in the mosh pit's so funny. It's just like it's Jet Li and like twenty seven purple haired people from Portland, and he's just fucking them all up. That's amazing. Good God oh, Almighty, guys! Thank it. you so much for listening to Radio Ridley Radio. Uh, send us an email at uh, radioridleyradio at gmail.com. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell two friends and tell two friends. This is one of the best podcast that nobody knows about and i just wanted to say thank you again to my boy frank for coming anytime through. so much fun dude dude please come do it again um please move here we love you bye bye we love you i love you bye bye <laughs>